Hey everyone, this is Elder Pinto, and I am going to give you a guided tour of CryEngine 3 and its editor, Sandbox. Throughout this training series, I'll be showing you how to create a complete environment scene from start to finish, recording and describing in detail all the necessary steps to bring an environment like this we're seeing here, or any other, to life. So um, we're gonna start off with um, we, you know, with the bare basics like the CryEngine 3 build and folder structure. We're also gonna be looking at how to customize the UI to uh, to your own taste, and uh, you know, establishing a good foundation to get started on this scene we're seeing here. After that, we're gonna get started with creating a brand new level with uh, both exterior areas and interiors, everything from scratch. We're going to start with the terrain and basic layout and block out. Then we're going to be looking at how to dress your scene with vegetation and props. And, um, you know, how to use some of the editor specific entities like, uh, like the fog volume, water volumes, voids, decals and roads, you know, the rope entity, clouds, etc., etc. We will also cover lighting and uh, environment settings. We're going to be looking at how to use CryEngine 3 unique image-based lighting system with environment cube maps and uh, uh, deferred lighting as well. And, uh, you know, it doesn't stop there. I'm also going to, uh, to teach you how to use this, uh, how to not only use the stock content, but I am also going to describe in detail how to create custom content from decals to roads, you know, terrain, textures, particles, materials, and um, there's even a whole section on how to create a very simple game asset in 3D Studio Max from start to finish with LODs, proxy, custom textures, materials, and uh, get it get it all in game. And of course, as I go, I will also give you, you know, a bunch of tips and tricks regarding workflow, the editor and uh, other details that I learned throughout all these years that I've been using CryEngine. Basically stuff that will be just impossible to do on a written tutorial or, uh, or documentation. You'll see that uh, CryEngine 3, what you see is what you play functionalities, is just a pure joy to work with. Everything is real-time, uh, lighting, shadows, decals, etc. You will never need to bake light maps, calculate or render anything. What you see in the editor viewport is exactly what you'll see in pure game. I hope you enjoyed this training series and uh, without further ado, let's get started. On the second volume, we're just gonna basically uh, pick up where we left off on the first one. On this one, we're going to resume working on this level that we're making here. Basically, we're going to start by uh, by placing a few uh, a few particles around, you know, um, like a few uh, you know a few dust particles in here, uh, dust on the on the houses chimneys. What else do do we have in here? You know, like uh, these uh, uh, waterfall water in here, uh, more smoke, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then we're gonna uh, be talking about visual dynamics. I'm a, you know, I'm a really big fan of always having uh, something moving on the on, on the screen, like uh, whether it's uh, you know animals flying, uh, particles, uh, uh, etc. Then uh, we're gonna be looking at uh, decals and roads. Decals are very powerful on CryEngine. They just basically uh, allow you to uh, to project a texture uh, both on terrain and uh, uh, assets as well. Road tools as well. We're gonna be uh, painting a few uh, roads in here, and uh, we're we're also gonna be looking at uh, prefabs and um, archetypes as uh, as well. These entities are very powerful because. Uh, they allow you to have a uh, physicalized object, breakable object, etc. And uh, we're also going to be looking at uh, how to place and how to configure uh, door entities, um, rope entities that react 
when uh, when you shoot at them and react to the wind as well. Um, we're also going to be uh, looking at sounds and, um, you know, how to have uh, different uh, ambient sounds in your level. We're also going to be uh, looking at layers. Like, um, it's very important to, uh, to keep your level organized, place sounds in the sound layer, particles on the particle layer, um, you know, uh, keep the dynamic geometry on a, on a dynamic layer, etc, etc, etc. We're, we're, we're going to be looking at that as well. We're going to be looking at uh, solids as well. Uh, solids are fairly powerful in, the, um, in Sandbox. You can just block out areas really, really fast by just... Uh, drawing uh, solids and, and, and blocks. We're going to be uh, making a cave as well, like how to, um, how to actually carve a hole on the terrain and have like a, a seamless transition between uh, proper terrain and, and voxels. We're also going to be looking at these areas. These areas are, are really powerful to have. Um, interior scenes they allow you uh, to have uh, better lighting on uh, on uh, interiors etc and uh, we're gonna have a video dedicated to um, to environment cube map as well they um, they allow you to have uh, image based lighting as we can see in here the reflections are really nice and and uh, and sharp and they basically uh, reflect uh, the environment around it and uh, we're going to be looking at how to, uh, how to place clouds in the sky. And to finalize this uh, volume, we're going to be talking about a little bit about lighting. As you can see, um, the time of day we have at the moment is slightly more stylized than uh, the default forest level that shipped with the Cry Engine 3. So uh, we're going to be looking at some of the, the cool functions that you can do with, a, with the time of day. And uh, we're going to be tweaking that as well.